All right, so let's talk about the Quest 3 pass-through. Half the people are saying it's great, and the other half are saying it's bad. So what's really going on? What's up? My name is Arzivo VR, and today we are going to talk all about the Quest 3 pass-through. We'll perform a few tests to see how it behaves in different conditions, both in headset and through the lens. So let's get started. How did all this begin? Just like most people, I got to try the Quest 3 for the very first time on launch day. The release coincided with me hitting 900 subscribers, so to celebrate, but also test out the new headset, I baked cookies entirely in pass-through as recorded straight out of my headset. That's when I started seeing comments stating that their pass-through experience while wearing the headset was nowhere near the quality I had shown in the video. People reported much worse graininess or noise levels, as well as bad warping. And that sentiment wasn't just limited to my video, I kept seeing those comments everywhere on other creators' posts, as well as on Reddit. So that raised a few questions. What does pass-through look like when filmed through the lens instead of directly on the headset? How does lighting affect pass-through quality? And does each individual headset just maybe have different pass-through capabilities? First, let's look at how the Quest 3 pass-through is when filmed through the lens. For this test, we are going to be looking at this dish soap in regular overhead lighting in my kitchen, no ring lights like I had in my baking video. Warping exists especially as we get closer to the subject, but this really isn't a surprise because we had seen leaked videos of the pass-through quality as far back as September, which showed the existence of warping. Even my baking video shows this, so again, not a surprise. What's key here is how much less warping there is compared to the Quest Pro. As you can see through the lens, in the same exact location and lighting conditions, the Quest Pro pass-through makes the dish soap look like its soul is leaving its body. <laughs> but what about graininess or noise? When it comes to pass-through, lighting plays a critical role and can greatly improve your experience to a certain degree, as long as you have realistic expectations. So this is that same clip we watched earlier of the Quest 3 through the lens, with overhead lighting in my kitchen. Now, this clip is the same thing, but with those overhead lights turned off. Notice how they're similar, but the one on the right looks grainier and less vibrant because of less lighting. Let's take it one step further by going outside with the Quest 3, both at night when there's little lighting, and in the morning when there's plenty of sun. Just a warning, it is not at all advisable for you to wear your Quest 3 outside, because even a little bit of sun exposure could really mess up your lenses. So please do not try this at home. This is how the Quest 3 pass-through recorded on the headset looks outdoors in nighttime. It's much, much grainier because of the lack of light. And since this is recorded video, it should theoretically be better than this through the lens video. But of course, since the video on the right was filmed in decent lighting conditions, it looks better than the footage with low light. Now, let's compare it with this footage outdoors during the day. It's of course not perfect, but it's a lot clearer than the nighttime footage. Meta's official website recommends to use the color pass-through in a room with a light level of at least 50 lux, with lux being a unit of illumination. They say this is roughly equivalent to a soft evening light used in a family room. Of course, from experience, we all know that one soft evening light is probably just the bare minimum to have the headset successfully track, but would not necessarily give you the best pass-through quality. Meta also suggests to do the book test saying that if you can comfortably read a book in the room, then you likely have enough light to use your headset. And since one of our friends suggested that we do this, I went ahead and did a book test where I opened to a random page to do a cold read to see if I could while wearing the headset. And here are the results. For many of us, the most exciting aspect of the metaverse is the development of new devices that we might use to access, render, and operate it. Let's go find another random page again. Okay, one member, City Dow, oh, I don't know how to read this, de facto figurehead, uh, told Financial Times that we hoped Wyoming embrace of the Dow structure would become this fundamental link between digital assets, crypto, and the physical world. I was successfully able to read a book through the Quest 3 pass-through without any eye strain, which if you've seen my old reading tests with the Quest Pro, 
you would know that I am prone to migraines and I'm therefore sensitive to bad pass-through quality. In this case, I didn't have an issue. The same is true for the phone test. Pass-through while wearing the Quest 3 felt much more comfortable visually than doing the same with the Quest Pro. What if you already have so much lighting, but your pass-through quality is still bad? Well, there's a theory circulating online, and again, let me emphasize that this is just a theory I've seen and not at all confirmed to be a fact, that some headsets were just made with different qualities and are therefore performing differently. I experienced this firsthand with the Quest Pro. My Quest Pro has really bad microphone issues. Didn't fall on the floor. Oh, what the f and the same is true for David Heaney from Upload VR, while others with the Quest Pro were perfectly fine with their microphones. Now, with the varying pass through quality of the Quest 3, people have similar suspicions that their specific headset may be the culprit. I reached out to Meta for an official comment on this, but did not hear back at the time of this video. Ultimately, my takeaway is this. Pass-through quality heavily relies on your room's lighting conditions. Ambient lighting just as critical as those overhead lights. Film during the day indoors and you theoretically should get much better quality than if you film in the same conditions at nighttime. But for those with persistently high noise levels that are not resolved by usual lighting solutions, well, this continues to be a mystery as there could be other factors in play that we just don't know about. There's also a possibility that the Quest 3's pass-through quality was hyped up so much by early reviewers and meta commercials that the public's expectation was pushed so high, anything short of 2020 vision was deemed to be bad. The Quest 3's pass-through is far from perfect. You will see noise, you will see warping, and it still looks a lot like a video feed than naked eye vision. But as someone who's owned every standalone headset from Meta, my personal take is that this is still the best pass-through they've come out with, and that with a few adjustments as well as tapering expectations, one can still truly enjoy a mixed reality with the Quest 3. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoy this, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any videos.